Welcome back to Let's Play Sunless Skies Sovereign Edition. First things first, uh, I want to remind you guys that, or not remind, but I want to encourage you guys to watch at double speed. If you're watching on YouTube, double speed is shift and right angle bracket. <coughs> Saves you time. Uh, doesn't really benefit me. It's mainly just for you guys. <laughs> uh, last episode, we were in Eleutheria, and we took care of some business. Got the Cloak of the Lion, and we obtained a new engine. The Devourer of Distance. And um, yeah, it's like a base boosted full steam mode. A little bit faster. Perfect for zipping around if you're smuggling or if you're trying to finish a quest like I am. We then made our way to the Eagle's Empyrean and hit the relay and now we're back in the reach in Hybris. This is our first time hanging out here so let's uh, check it out. A fledgling colony trying to dig its fingernails deep enough into the spongy fungal fabric of the reach to cling on when hard times come. It is a sad truth that many more settlements are founded than flourish. Shore leave in Fungal Meadow. The crew requests a little R&R. &R. They follow you out into what passes for a meadow between livid mushrooms and oozing polyps. The silence of the place hangs heavily on you. Some other crew attempt to break it with a ballad of the promised days. We'll join the crew in their song. It is a part of a, your job to keep the morale up. Pushing back the silence, your voices cut into the still meadow air, easing the tension. Even in a dark place like this, camaraderie offers warmth. You return to the train feeling considerably better. Hybris deserted, the colonists' house are dark, and there is no sign of a soul about. The smithy is empty. No smoke comes from the Brendan's chimneys. The firework on the town hall remains unfinished, the fretwork. A bee, laced with curling fronds, flies by, its, dr its drone, the only sound in Hybris. Hmm, <sighs> we'll take a poor report. Everyone is gone, aside from the station master. The fungus remains, however. Someone will surely be interested in what has occurred here. The station master professes ignorance. His matter has not improved since in the absence of everyone else. <clears throat> there are new shades to the fungus. Indigo, crimson, jet. The trees have taken on a new pallid hue. Spores cloud the air. The silence is almost restful. And, um, let's see... Oh, Wonder Hybris. Mm -hmm. Nobody here. Scavenge. The abandoned settlement for fuel and supplies. I think this is a one-time thing, so we will save that for when we desperately need it. <coughs> now, we must make our way down to Polmir's. Question is, do we take the safe direction through Agatha's way into Harrison's Hollow and through Chance's Gloom or should we check out Faith's Fall? To Skeen's Guide. Behold, the remains of a celestial behemoth. Five supplies you need too. What remains of the behemoth's carapace is scarred with sigils. Most are marred and broken, some still holding a sullen, resentful power. Your locomotive is stopped on a broad, flat section of the shell. The few sigils nearby are too cracked to risk much harm. Yeah, let's, let's explore. Delve deeper into the body. What secrets might you find in the depths of a messenger corpse? Heavily laden. You handpick a few of your crew. Their expressions are grim. 
Together, you make your way to a crevice in the carapace and secure a rope. You lower supplies down first. It would not do to be caught unprepared. <coughs> As you climb down, a sickly scent fills your lungs, sweet and heady and corrupt. You have to pause at the bottom to tie a scarf around your face. Your crew does likewise. Desiccation has created tunnels in the behemoth's corpse. The walls are wizened flesh, stone hard, striated with muscle. Break through the hardened membrane. A crack reveals a chamber beyond. When you press your ear to the crack, you can hear a faint groaning noise. What could be inside? Within, with the membrane broken, the flesh above begins sagging downwards. A stoker's swift work with a strut means you can explore the newly exposed opening. You'll have to work swiftly. The strut creaks and complains. It cannot last long. A frame coil of rope and an empty box of supplies reveals that you are not the first explorers to come here. We'll copy sigils from the walls. Sigils are branded onto the walls. Many are charred and broken. If you find some on the surface, you can study them. Or if you bring some to the surface. Back on the surface, you're able to piece together a little of their message. They are sigils of greeting, of truce, but they have become scarred and blackened as their lie was revealed. Hmm. Not enough supplies will leave. Here we are at Gervais's rest at the Inconceivable Circus. We'll take a poor report and um, collect some tickets before attending another performance. Visit the amusements to drop the terror and search for the Blindness <laughs> Throne. The Queen told you that the Blindness Throne could be found here. <sighs> the search for the throne. When you ask the employees of the circus about the Blindness Throne, they give you nothing but odd looks and shrugs. The only option left is to lose yourself in your visions and hope that dream logic leads you in the right direction. <coughs> Close your eyes. The stars go out, one by one. All that is left is the moon. You mount your war horse, patting its flanks. Of course you know where to go. Everyone knows that the Blindness Throne lies to the south, in the castle of the Seraphim. <laughs> At the castle, you're met by a band of fellow knights. They feast you, ply, with, ply you with wine, generally make you feel welcome. Once you're seated, they lead you to an enormous oaken table. Each sits around the table, leaving just one chair empty. A throne of rough basalt. The blindness throne, says the commander of the knights. Only those worthy of the cup may sit on it and keep their eyesight. Sit upon the throne. It is bruisingly uncomfortable, unrelenting stone, roughly hewn. But proving you are worthy for the cup was never going to be easy. The throne's first curse. As you sit in the throne, you feel a cold numbness spread through your limbs. When you try to move them, it is as though they are made of the same lump and stone as the chair beneath. You are sitting upon the blindness throne. Try not to lose your eyes. Don't panic, 
says one of the knights. The throne binds all who sit upon it. Just stay calm and let it do its work. Steal yourself for the ordeal ahead. Whatever is about to happen, it isn't going to be good. Steel mind, steel heart. You breathe deeply and empty your mind of worry. The Commander Knight nods approvingly. Very good. Deep breaths. Stay calm. The Blindness Throne is known to play tricks on the mind. Just make sure you never forget that you are a knight. A pit opens beneath the Blindness Throne and swallows you whole. Demons flock about you in the darkness, warty skinned gargoyles who inspect you like a prized turkey. After a moment's chatter, one of them unscrews the top of your skull and begins rifling through its contents like a frenzied burglar. We'll take everything from you, hisses another of the demons, his hot breath in your ear. Hmm, we gotta ward them away with a prayer, but we can endure the demon's invasion of our mind as best as we can. You can feel yourself fraying at the seams. A worthy knight will take this, says the demon eagerly, plucking from your skull the memory of your mother's last words. And this, gone to the name of your homeland. And this and this. In fact, I think we'll take it all, starting with your eyes. He extends a talon. You grit your teeth and remind yourself that the demons will have no power you, over you as long as you are worthy of the cup. The talon wavers, halts, and withdraws before it reaches your eye. It seems this one is worthy, says the surprised demon, fading slowly from view. The ringleader snaps his fingers, and one of the robbers approaches you with a blindfold. For just a moment, his face becomes a demon's. The rag in his hand becomes a sizzling red poker. Oh shit, if the robbers successfully blind you and knock you out, you realize you'll have failed the test of the blindness throne. You will be unworthy of the cup. Wriggle free of your bonds. You've been steadily working your wrist free for the last half hour. Your skin is raw red. Oh my god, this is it. This is where I can't go back. This is where I might, I might fail. Wave have mercy. Ah, <sighs> escape. Oh, it was a 60% chance. You twist your wrist at an impossible looking angle, rigidly stretching. Stretch your fingers and yank your hands free from the leather straps. Your captors don't seem to notice. Not yet. The robbers still seem unaware that you've slipped your bonds. You only have a few precious seconds to act. Pull a knife from your boot. You'll take the ringleader hostage and threaten the robbers into giving your money back. Oh shit! Oh no! I wasn't reading carefully. Hostage, you spring from the dentist chair, knife flashing in your hand and barrel towards the ringleader like a runaway locomotive. He barely has time to change his expression from smug satisfaction to utter shock before your knife is pressed to his throat. Your demands, the money, safely returned. An untroubled exit from the museum. <coughs> says the ringleader, trying to speak without moving his Adam's apple. Of course. Anything for a way. In short order, you are back on the streets, outside the museum, free, unblinded, your money safely returned. You have successfully proven your worth on the blindness throne. You are a little closer to regaining your grip on reality. I don't want <laughs> to regain my grip on reality. I want to go crazy. That was scary. I'm assuming we head back to the Unseen Queen now. 
Let's check our journal. What is this? What is this? You will find the unfindable, even if it means breaking the sky in two. Prove yourself worthy of finding the cup. What is this? Is it because I chose the sanity option? I need to speak with the queen. We made our way back. Let us go see the queen. Show her the cloak of the lion. You crossed the foul. Uh, actually, I looked it up. It's a uh, falchion. It's a uh, falchion means it's uh, falchion is a uh, like a a broadsword, which is why when we crossed the bridge, it was a knife sedge. You crossed the falchion bridge and recovered it from the antlers of a buried monster. The discovery of the cloak, you unfurl the cloak of the lion, shimmering like gossamer. As the cloak ripples, the symbol of the lion seems to change, charge and pounce across the cloth. The courtiers raise an astounded cheer. A magnificent artifact, murmurs the unseen queen, truly. The knight who wears this must surely be on the path to victory. Tell her the tale of how you sat upon the blindness throne. Despite the throne's curse, you walked away with your eyesight. The conquest for the blindness throne. You tell the queen the tale of how you sat upon the blindness throne and walked away with your eyesight intact. She listens raptly. The courtiers mo uh, mother admire. Uh, mother admiringly among themselves no doubt a story that will pass into the legend says the unseen queen and another step closer to proving you are worthy of the cup you've proven you're worthy of the martyr king's cup you've discovered the cloak and survived the throne the search for the cup the court erupts in wild cheering a bottle of fine wine is thrust into your hand, and the seneschal proposes a toast. The queen quietens celebrations with a single upraised finger. The next step is to find where the cup is hidden, says the queen. There is another quester who knows, though she was imprisoned before she could tell me. She was one of the first and the fiercest to embark on my journey. Alas, that was many years past. She has changed beyond measure since then. She can be found at the dread prison, Piranesi, serving now as a chaplain. Go to her and show her the cloak to prove you are worthy of the cup. Meet the grave conformer in Piranesi and ask her for the true location of the cup. Okay, and we'll speak to the courtiers. The little rats, another worm crab. Thank you. Okay, so we got the cloak and we got... Oh, we stayed alive on the blindness throne. Jesus, that 60% chance. <laughs> and you can't swap your officers mid-challenge either. Do I have any... Irons officers? Mirrors? Veils? Rats? No, I, I, so that was all me. <laughs> okay.
No, I mean, we had help from the wave. We prayed. <laughs> um, right. I think I'm gonna end it there real quick. Just for anybody who's curious, um, if they want to have the um, juggernaut set up with all the auxiliary slots. So in my plating, in one plating, I have the Watchers and Nazar which you can purchase in the Blue Kingdom. Um, hearts required at 65. The Senora Zenobia Prestige Scythe is an auxil auxiliary um, module and you need 13 experimental mods from the Royal Society and you also need to finish the inscribed Tinkerer's Quest. Your hearts need to be at 45. Lastly, there is the Wit and Vinegar Sawing Device. Your irons need to be at 45 and I do believe this is purchased either at London or in the Reach. I'm using the Gleaming Galley, which is hearts at 45, bridge slot, and uh, Heathcliff Durable Plating from the um, Portsmouth House in the Royal Society, hearts at 45. Lastly, I am using the Devourer of Distance engine, uh, obtained if you have the Tisiphony engine from, I think, the Blue Kingdom and it offers a stronger full speed, full steam speed. These are my guns, there's my owl, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. We're headed to Eleutheria, to Piranesi, to find the Great Confirmer and ask her the whereabouts of the cup.